Greetings everyone. My name is Del Rothfella Rentli. I'm a curator at Sri Krishna Science Center, Patna. In continuation to our lecture series, today we will be talking about prime numbers. So as an intro introductory session, we'll have a general view of the picture of the uh, what we call as numbers. So, in general, numbers are called, uh, we have, in the beginning, we have complex numbers, which can be written in the form A plus B I. So, A is any number, any real, um, any number, any real number, B is also any real number, but I, this makes it complex, where I is written as the square root of minus 1 that makes it complex so a is called the real part and b is called the imaginary part now when a is 0 that number is called pure imaginary numbers and when it is non zero it is a perfect complex number or uh, we can also call it as imaginary number on the other hand when b is equal to uh, when b is zero so we have real numbers only a so real numbers are actually the numbers which we usually can imagine so real numbers in a very broad manner broad category can be divided into rational and irrational numbers rational numbers are those numbers which can be written in the form of a fraction, let's say p by q, where q is not zero, and uh, the fraction, uh, the, the decimal points terminated somewhere. For example, three by two. If we perform the division three by two, we will get 1.5. So the number terminates at, uh, at the first decimal point. On the other hand, irrational numbers are those which never end. Um, the decimal, the decimal digits, the decimal digits never end, like root two or pi, the number pi itself. So even the rational numbers, again, the rational numbers can be written um, composed of integers. Integers are nothing but uh, which uh, the, those numbers which have um, zero after the decimal points, or we should say, uh, with no with no decimal points, like what we have written here. These are these all are integers, negative integers, positive integers, and all are integers including zero. Now integers again they are made up of uh, whole numbers whole numbers are numbers 0 to any number that we can count and again whole numbers are made up of natural numbers so that starts from 1 till whatever we can count so whole number without 0 is called are called natural numbers so the numbers that we know are formed using natural numbers they become whole and according to this diagram now among the natural numbers there are there there are certain class of numbers called as composite numbers for example the number 24 it can be written as 3 times 8. These are called composite number. Any number which can be um, factorized. This is called factorization. So again, 8 can be further written as 4 into 2. Again, 4 can be written as 2 into 2. So that number which can be written uh, in this manner is called a composite number. But on the other hand, 23 is 
we cannot think about any number that uh, that multiplied out to 23 except 23 into 1 itself into 1 so these are called non composite number or prime numbers so in a certain way we can say prime numbers uh, all numbers are built upon natural numbers and the natural numbers are the building blocks I mean prime numbers are the building blocks of natural numbers so we have talked about factorization so let's say the number 2000 is uh, can be written into 1000 times 2 so 1000 itself can be written as 500 times 2 500 itself can be written as 200 times 2 and so on so eventually when we factorize out to the number 2000 we get only prime numbers in the end likewise 333 can be factorized out into its prime components so we can say prime numbers are the building blocks of number um, natural numbers and this factorization this scheme is the core of what we call as encryption or cryptography that we will come later in which is very very important in cyber security and uh, many more things so let's talk about some brief historical facts the study of prime numbers or a serious study of prime numbers started in the time of Pythagoras approximately 570 to 5, uh, 495 BCE before the common era however there was not uh, a good written records uh, of this time that we'll talk about in, uh, in the next uh, slide anyway Pyth uh, Pythagoras has uh, he had uh, devised one formula or a, a structure those are called Pythagorean prime which is of the form 4n plus 1 4 times n plus 1 so when n equals to 1 we get 5 and then 3 we get all these things so the prime numbers that can be written in the form of 4n plus 1 those are called prime uh, Pythagorean prime so among the prime numbers so Pythagorean prime primes are a subset of the prime numbers so uh, later on Fermat the great mathematician Fermat had found out that these Pythagorean primes can be written as the sum of two square uh, two squares so let's say five can be written as a sum of one square plus two square or 13 can be written as 2 squared plus 3 squared and so on so we can also find uh, we can also see some uh, connection between the Fermat's uh, sum of rules uh, sum of squares sum of square theorem or rules in relation with the what we call as Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem so c squared can c squared is nothing but those Pythagorean primes uh, it can uh, it can be the the square this can be the square of the hypotenuse of a right angle and a and b are the two other legs of the uh, two other sides of the triangle of the right triangle so as as was mentioned in the previous slide there is a difference of around 300 years from uh, the time of Pythagoras to uh, this great personalities Euclid and Aristotelians Aristotelians so the there was no proper written records of the uh, during the 600th century but uh, BC but we have certain documents in this era three uh, approximately the the third century uh, BC so they come up with some idea now uh, with a statement very strong statement there are infinitely many prime numbers and uh, especially Aristotle had also devised one uh, scheme to find out 
uh, prime numbers. So, uh, and Euclid, he is very well known, uh, especially in the field of geometry. So, the disciples of Pythagoras, um, they were they they were more of uh, partly scientists and partly mystics. Mystics means uh, people who are engaged with super uh, some spiritual powers, which cannot be explained or superhuman quality uh, or su some supernatural or super <laughs> that kind of uh, uh, that kind of characteristics so they use mathematics solely for some mystical reasons so numbers were related to some uh, certain kind of um, what to say till till this modern age modern time we associate numbers with some uh, superstitious beliefs. Let's say seven. The number seven is always considered as a uh, good number, lucky number. Number 13, another prime number, is not um, is considered as a not, not very good number. Uh, so in many hotels, uh, the number 13, room number 13 is skipped. Like it goes from room number 11, room number 12, and then room number 14 so uh, Friday the 13th or uh, some, something like that so we associate prime numbers uh, with many of our superstitious beliefs so likewise uh, though these kind of beliefs already started from the uh, the 3rd century BC and uh, in 1985 a great astronomer and a writer Carl Sagan wrote in his novel in his book called uh, titled contact he had also written extraterrestrial cultures or we call them as aliens try to contact us using signals that are based on prime numbers so prime numbers become the building block of uh, natural numbers and they have also become the mm, very important means of communication it seems so, another strange um, characteristic of prime numbers is their distribution. When we go from uh, 0 to f uh, counting from one to f uh, 0 to 50 or 1 to 50, there are around 15 prime numbers and 51 to 100 around 11 or this is around 10 or 9 I think um, less than 11. So, it goes like that. So. Uh, I have done these calculations, but I don't remember the numbers. This is, I think, uh, around nine. So it goes like that. So as as we go further and further, the the density of prime numbers keeps on decreasing. As uh, if we do uh, some curve fitting, this is uh, at least one by r square. It goes down. It it keeps on decreasing and decreasing till five hundred. And uh, they, the the separation between each prime numbers become also uh, also become more and more uh, scattered, sparse, less dense. Or from zero to ten thousand, it drops down very very quick. So the distribution of prime numbers can also be very. This has also been studied by many many mathematicians academically or even non-formally mm, it triggered interest of many uh, many scholars so another thing is called ulam spiral so natural numbers written in the form of a square spiral so this is called ulam spiral it goes on and it goes on like that so Looking at this, uh, I mean, the prime numbers are located along diagonals in the Ulam spiral, and it looks like this along diagonals, diagonals in the Ulam's spiral. Uh, one among many applications is in encryption. When when we visit any website. 
we see either HTTP or HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and this extra S means secure. And the main difference is it requires a SSL certificate. SSL means Secure Sockets Layer. So without, without S, without the secure, uh, SSL certificate user, uh, it is insecure. So without any checking, the, the check gate is open. The check gate is always open. But here with the HTTPS, without, uh, with the SSL certification, the check gate is closed. Until and unless we have this uh, certificate, we cannot pass through. So it is always very, very important um, in browsing our um, websites or uh, net banking and many other things. We always have to, uh, we must always check whether we have this S or not. And the core of this SSL, the core of this SSL is the public key encryption scheme. Uh, one very important thing is, scheme is the RSA, which is a public key encryption technology developed by RSA Data Security Incorporation. RSA means Revest, Shamir, Edelman, which, uh, who are the inventors of the technique in 1978. So it works like this. John uses Mary's public key to encrypt the email and sends it to Mary. So Mary's public key, using Mary's public key, encryption, sent over the internet. Mary received the mm, the envelope, let's say, the, the encrypted. So she decrypted using her private key and then get the message. So uh, this public key can be your credit card number or something like that. And then P and Q are the some prime numbers, the private key. So there are some techni um, techniques, deeper mathematics, which can be, uh, which are used. So using these two keys, two prime numbers, these are very large numbers, very, uh, very large prime numbers. So using these two prime numbers, a public key is generated based on which communication is made. And the actual encryption, uh, the actual decryption can be made only using the private keys. So let's say, even if I get the envelope, I cannot open it until and unless I get the private keys. So it's something like I can have the ATM card, but without the PIN number. I mean, it's something like that. So, but once I have the PIN, I can access to that, I can have access to that account, the bank account. So, the main the main principle behind this is what we had called as the, uh, what we have discussed in the previous slide as factorization. So when very, very large prime numbers are multiplied, we get another more large um, prime number. So, so knowing this, knowing this number does not guarantee us to know this P and Q. Let's say this number can be uh, 200 digit numbers. So factorizing that huge 200 digit numbers will take how many, I mean, uh, how long will it take? So that is the problem of, um, I mean, that makes it secure. So, but in, the pre in our previous uh, lectures, uh, lecture, we talk about quantum computers. So a quantum computer can do something which a classical uh, computer takes um, millions of years in few seconds. So with the advent of quantum computers, uh, this security may also be um, threatened. Who knows? So, 
the security lies in the time taken to factorize out this huge number the public key so given this we have to find out p and q that is that is the main thing it's not about uh, locking with a strong uh, securing with a strong lock it's it's about the time taken to um, factorize out this large number n into p and q so some common fact about prime numbers all prime numbers are odd except two the number two which is the only even prime number and no prime number ends in five except for the number five itself and the largest prime number found so far has 24 million eight sixty two thousand and forty eight digits so this much big numbers to factorize out I mean that will take a lot of time so that is the that is the way um, security is established and there is one organization called great internet machine prime search in short G GIMPS, GIMPS since 1996 they are dedicated to finding more and more prime numbers the larger prime numbers and there is a number called Mercy number which is of the form MP equals to 2 raised to 2 to the power P minus 1 where P is a prime number itself so the idea of the idea and characteristics of prime numbers has sparked interest in many many uh, scholars and enthusiasts I should say and uh, the the applications or more knowledge are yet to be uh, unraveled so I hope you enjoy the, uh, the talk thank you